Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie. And today we are here with my blind reaction to the Willow Bees. This is a donation reward for Sweet Venom, and yeah. I don't know anything about this. I don't know what this is about at all. All I know is it's a movie that was released on Netflix a couple years back. And... I guess it exists. I haven't heard anyone talk about this. I don't know what people think about it. But... I keep seeing it, like, pop up randomly here and there. Um, I, I don't see, like, the consensus, the thoughts. I just see, that, like, people, I guess you could say briefly mention it here and there. Um, so it's, like, I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious as to what this is going to be. I have seen what characters look like, and it's a... An interesting art style reminds me of a few different other things. Um, yeah, I, I guess we're just going to have to find out. Um, hopefully it ends up being pretty good. And we get through it and I end up really enjoying it. Um, just as a note, um, I've had a little cough since coming back from Yomacon. Uh, do not worry, it's nothing major. It's just a little cough, little scratchy throat. That's it. I don't feel sick in literally any other way. So, we should be fine to go on. I've got some cough drops on me. I've got some hot tea. We should be fine. So, all of that being said, we're just going to get on with this and hope for the best. Uh, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode, or to the movie. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. You don't see many movies like this. In most movies like this, the parents would learn their lesson. They would realize that they have been neglectful and wrong, and they would end up actually becoming good by the end. They would fix themselves... And the family would leave, live happily ever after. Because a lot of these movies, a lot of these kind of a animated films centering around this kind of thing, tend to play by fairy tale rules. And what I mean is they give you the best possible scenarios at every turn. It's like you're going to have these downfalls, you're going to have these, uh, these bad moments, but in the end, everything's going to work out because it has to. It has to show the kids that, you know, in the end, it's all good. Um, so a movie that subverts that and shows that, no, not all parents like this are going to redeem themselves. In fact, most of the time, they won't. And most of the time, they deserve to be eaten by a shark. Movies that can showcase this that some people are just bad and honestly don't deserve a second chance. And that those put into these kinds of terrible situations have to find other uh, circumstances to put themselves in that make things better. They have to find and create their happy ending themselves rather than one being thrust upon them by, you know, just good luck, basically. So, I like that. I, I really like that this movie is willing to go there, is willing to show that these parents are irredeemable villains, that there's nothing good in them. Because it allows us to 
connect with these kids a lot more. It allows us to sympathize and empathize with them, seeing their plights and seeing them need a new living situation, a new family situation. And that kind of goes into what is my favorite trope in anything, the found family trope. And most time you see the found family trope, it's a group of friends who are so close that they become family for each other, that they bond together to such a heavy degree that they are family. Think of something like One Piece. Here, it's done a little differently, but it still falls under the trope. Here, it's literally about these kids who are neglected and abused by their parents literally having to find not just the family in each other, but more to their family that, you know, will actually fucking give a shit about them. And they end up creating a found family with the nanny that their parents hire for them, who, while weird, is delightful and, and wonderful and an absolute gem of a human being. And Mr. Melanoff, this candy uh, maker, who, again, while weird, is an absolute gem of a human being. He's so fucking nice. Like, he, he's so genuine and caring, and he's just, he's a great dude. And, of course, we have Ruth, the baby who uh, kind of leads to a lot of the movie's uh, plot. Leads to Tim and them um, conceiving the orphan plan in the first place. So, a lot of this kind of starts with Ruth. Ruth is the one who ends up bringing everyone together, if you think about it. Because Ruth ends up stealing Mr. Melanoff's heart and seeing Mr. Melanoff, like, so happy and genuine and kind and loving towards her, wins over uh, the nanny and that's how the kids are eventually won over too because they see that the that these people actually give a shit actually care about them now i i feel the the narrator portion of this the cat was a little unnecessary uh and not just because it's ricky gervais um because he had a hand in the entire movie he's like executive producer or something um, I, 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 I feel the narration aspect wasn't entirely needed. I feel like we could have gotten everything we needed to without it. Narrators can sometimes work. Um, I compared this in the reaction to a series of unfortunate events. And as we know, that series has a narrator. Um, whether in the books or in the movie or the show. Whichever version you're, uh partaking in but the narrator in that is so cleverly written that it allows it to feel like part of the story here it's just kind of, the narrator is just kind of there i feel like it would have been maybe a little better if the cat didn't talk and we just saw the cat every now and again doing stuff and like interacting behind the scenes with everything going on I think that would have been a little more interesting um but yeah I, I, I really like that this uh, movie also showcased um basically child protective services as not great because like I mentioned um in real life at least here in America it's not great. The, so many kids, so many kids orphaned and whatnot are put through the system and are treated like shit, are just 
bounced around between houses and whatnot with no care. It's it's completely fucked up. That's why there's a lot of us in America who who, who believe in adoption to get those kids out of that system so much. Um, obviously, adoption is a good, important thing anyway, but you know what I mean. Um, it's just, it, it, it's terrible what they're put through. And I like that this movie doesn't really uh, hold back on calling that out. Even if it doesn't go into full detail on everything, of course. Uh, and like I said, uh, the parents just remaining bad guys, just remaining just terrible pieces of shit, is refreshing. Because again, I've seen too many of these where they're just redeemed. Where the parents who have been antagonistic or mean-spirited or just kind of terrible the entire time through are suddenly given a redemption. And it's like, oh, I'm doing this shit because I love you. And it's like, I, I've, I know I've gone too far, but I'm trying to protect you. And it's like, shut the fuck up. I hate it when movies use that excuse. That's not an excuse for abuse. You don't mistreat your kids because you're trying to protect them. That's not, that's not a valid excuse. Um, that was one of my notable problems, if you remember, with, uh, with that other movie, Mitchells vs. the Machines. I was trying to think of the name for a second there. That was one of my problems with that. It's like, you have the father being openly antagonistic towards our main character, being honestly an asshole. And then at the end, it's just this forced redemption that just, in my eyes, didn't work. So, I like here that they don't try to force that. Now, mind you, in this movie, the parents are a lot worse than the father was in that uh, in, in Mitchell's vs. the Machines. Obviously. But... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh my. But nonetheless, my point is still there. It still stands because he was still not a good parent. But it just kind of excuses that with flimsy logic. And it's just disappointing. If I'm being completely honest. Um, so I'm glad that this movie didn't take that route. Um, the voice acting in this was was really good. I mean, you have some big names in here. That, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. Um, none of them really do anything that takes, takes you out of it. You know what I mean? Um, the animation is really interesting, too has a very unique style blending uh, 2D and 3D elements while also kind of making it look uh, like stop motion at times. It, it allows it to stand out. And then there's the music. The soundtrack was really great, uh, but that song specifically, um, that song like was bringing tears to my eyes. It's like it was so good. It was such a beautiful song about, you know, the, basically the found family trope. And it was, it was sad and lovely at the same time. Um, I, I'm just, I, I really enjoyed this. Like, on top of everything else, the general enjoyability was really high with this film. I, I know there were portions where I wasn't saying much, but a lot of that comes down to the fact that I, I was trying not to cough a lot of the time. And so I was keeping quiet because I was trying, I was actively trying not to cough while paying attention to the movie. Um, but I tried to, I tried to share as much of my thoughts as I could. And I think I got most of it out anyway. Um, yeah, I, I just, I think this was really good. Honestly, I know a lot of people will disagree with me. I think this was notably better than Mitchell's versus the Machines. Um, I, I think this movie was notably better. 
Um, I would honestly love to see more of this world, more of these characters and everything. Obviously, we're not going to. But that would be pretty cool. And nonetheless, I, I, I hope I can find reactions to this because I definitely want to watch it again. Um, but tell me your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think of this film? What did you think of its themes and messages? It's, it, it's ability to go into some dark places as well as just the lessons in there such as that not everyone can be redeemed and shouldn't be even given the chance, honestly. Let me know your thoughts on all of that and more in the comments below, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, and thank you to uh, Venom for donating for this. Um, but as usual, I um, hope you enjoyed. I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.